Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to MakerQuest. In this episode, we're going to learn how to build our very own portable USB charger. Awesome! So first of all, why would we want one? Well, if you are like me and have an old iPhone, you probably know that the battery doesn't last for very long. So if you're out and about or on like a camping or climbing trip or just outdoor adventure, it's really nice to be able to charge your phone so you can take pictures um, or just be able to use your phone in case of emergencies. Um, and also, most microcontrollers run off of USB, so if you build a project, it's a really handy way to be able to power your project with a battery. So then you can put it outside, you can take it with you on a trip, it makes it a lot more versatile and portable. So, yay! What's really cool about this project too is that it's really easy to add in a solar panel to charge the battery. So then you can use renewable energy technology to charge your phone, which is really awesome. Um, Alright, so what about USB? What is USB? USB actually stands for Universal Serial Bus, and it is a communication and uh, power supply protocol developed in the mid-90s. What does that mean? Well, basically, USB is a way for different electronic devices to talk to each other, and part of that talking sometimes is charging. So basically, what USB is doing is transferring information from one thing to another. And in the case of charging, it's transferring something, it's transferring power to your uh, device. USB has uh, four pins on it, so if you look really closely at a USB device, you'll notice four little um, metal bars. The two outside pins are uh, ground, or zero, uh, zero volts DC, and five volts DC. And the two inside pins are data pins. And the specific voltage and current on the inside data pins depends on the type of USB uh, port that you have, as well as the device that you have. So if you've ever plugged an Apple product into a USB uh, charger and it didn't work, it's because Apple products have a higher voltage on the data pins, which basically allows the phone to know whether or not the charger is an Apple product or not. So it can be kind of annoying, but also once you understand how it works, you can work around it, and in a funny way, you can kind of appreciate it. Um, all right, so that's USB. So um, <clears throat> how do we actually solve this problem? How do we go about starting to build our own portable USB charger? There's actually a lot of different ways to approach the problem. So you could get really down and dirty and just figure out all the components for a particular circuit and build it up from there. You could buy a kit called a Minty Boost kit, which kind of is a nice little in-between, which gives you all the components, and you can either buy it pre-assembled or you can uh, assemble it yourself. And it is about the size of an Altoids tin. It's about 20 bucks, so not too expensive. Or you can think about different creative ways to build your own portable USB charger. And so I'm kind of a lazy engineer, so I took that route, and I wanted to find the simplest and cheapest way to build a portable USB charger. And what I ended up coming up with was using a car charger. Because a car charger basically does all the hard work for us. It takes a uh, voltage output from your car battery and converts it to the necessary voltage output, voltage and current outputs for USB. So super easy. So then pretty much all we need is a battery with sufficiently high voltage to power the car charger. And the uh, voltage that the car charger requires will depend on the type of car charger, so just look it up. You can just Google the particular uh, charger that you have and look for the uh, voltage input specifications. Or you can just uh, assume that a 9 volt will work since your car battery is 12 volts. 9 volt is pretty close to that, um, so you can just go from there. So, okay, so now we know that we can use a USB car charger and a 9 volt to power the car charger, what do we do from there? Well, we need to figure out how to connect the, the battery to the car charger. And I would recommend um, opening up the car charger to see how uh, the power is transferred through the charger. So when you open it up, what you'll notice is that the front pin um, is connected to a spring, so that's basically acting as a switch. And these two side pins are connected to a uh, port in the middle of the board. And on some of these I've noticed that uh, one pin is connected to the circuit board and the other one's not. So that helps when you open it up to try and figure that out. So basically this tells me that the front pin is positive and the two side pins are ground. Alright, so to test it out, most of these have an onboard LED which makes it really easy to tell us if we are doing this right. 
So you can just go ahead and touch the leads of your battery to the car charger and make sure that the light lights up. Yay. So I saw it go on. It's kind of hard to do it by hand. There we go. All right, so awesome. Now we know that our car charger works. The nine volt is powering it. So now we can plug our device in. So I have a Arduino Uno here. I'm just gonna power it really quick and show that that works. So I can just, again, touch the leads of the battery. Loop. Yay. All right, so the Arduino <laughs> lights went on. I'm kind of not able to hold this exactly right, so it's kind of turning on and off. So a better way to do this would be to include alligator clips. So that way I can just connect it directly to the car charger and don't have to worry about my fingers getting in the way. All right, awesome. So there we go. And it also works with an iPhone. So if I plug my iPhone into this car charger, it'll start charging. Yay. <laughs> there we go, okay. So a little bit of a lag. Um, this is a pretty low capacity or basically low power device. So it'll probably take a while to charge your battery, but that's okay. Um, if you want to um, add in a solar panel, all you would do would be to connect the solar panel leads across the battery leads, meaning a positive solar panel lead connected to the positive battery lead, negative solar panel lead connected to the negative battery lead. And I would also recommend throwing in a diode in there, which basically prevents any current flowing from the battery back into the panel. And then the only other stipulation that you need to be aware of is that the panel voltage has to be higher than the battery voltage. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'll let you figure it out from there and I'm going to leave you with a question. And that question is, why do we need a battery if we have a solar panel? Or basically, why can't we just only use a solar panel? So think about that and let me know in the comments below. To answer last week's question, I asked, why does the solar panel voltage have to be higher than your battery voltage? And that's actually uh, an energy issue. So basically, if your panel voltage has higher energy than your battery voltage, the energy will flow into the battery. But if it's the other way around and the battery voltage is higher than the panel voltage, then the battery will want to discharge into the panel, which is bad. If you have a diode, it will prevent that from happening. But essentially, because you have this potential that is greater on the battery side than the solar panel side, the energy from the solar panel doesn't have enough to get over to the battery. So basically nothing will happen and the panel will just kind of be there and not doing anything. So yep, that's pretty much it. Please let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching and please subscribe.